planning for arthroscopy is not just uh, developing psychomotor skills. And you realize that everything connects to everything else. Arthroscopy, as a matter of fact, started uh, in the form of having to look inside the joint more, more than 40, 50 years ago. And it has basically tremendously evolved since. A lot of surgeries are not only done inside, but most surgeries are now done outside the joint. So you have a rotator cuff surgery or a lethargy surgery, which is done outside the joint. And with this, the patient expectations have skyrocketed. Each surgery therefore needs to be planned, and each step of the surgery requires a plan B. But if you look at the general plan for arthroscopy, you know that this is a very instrument heavy and a heavily dependent surgery on instruments. So you must have a backup for all your equipment. You may be having the tower in the best of hospitals, but you still need to have your backup somewhere else. You need to back up your skills, so it is best to have a mentor at all times and help at help, help at hand, because you may, may not always be on top of your learning, learning curve. Being a very low morbid surgery, indications for the surgery have to be absolutely precise. So you need to see a lot of videos of that procedure, and you have to study all the possible intraoperative complications. So let's look at some very simple examples. For instance, you have a young girl with a painful knee, and this is a very common uh, problem. And this girl goes from orthopedic surgeon to orthopedic surgeon to a physiotherapist, back to an orthopedic surgeon, and eventually sent to an arthroscopist to do an arthroscopy because they are not able to identify the cause of pain. Let me tell you that arthroscopy does not cure pain. It's like any other procedure, a procedure to treat structural damage that may be responsible for that pain. And when you look at MRIs, MRIs are extremely sensitive investigations. They need a proper correlation. Very often these people will be reported with probably a grade one, grade two so-called tears, which are not contributing towards your plane. So therefore, a proper understanding of the condition is very important. The other very common example is that of a painful knee in a middle-aged person. We know that very often this is probably because of a root tear. The moment you see an MRI and MRI only, you would probably land up doing a root repair. But if you were to actually look at the patient as a whole, and if you take a proper standing X-ray and a scanogram, you'd realize that the primary problem is a virus of the knee with or without a root tear, with a medial osteoarthrosis, and therefore the treatment here would be a high tibial osteotomy with or without a root repair. Finally, let's look at the most common surgery that is done today, and that is your planning in an ACL injury. I think the most important part in this particular planning is your preoperative discussion with the patient. You need to have the following points in your mind before you plan to do anything to this patient. You look at the associated injuries, you've got to time your surgery well. So if you look at the clinical MRI correlation, that is extremely important because not all ACL tears require reconstruction. So there would be a lot of conditions if you were to examine the patient well and correlate it with your MRI, you would find that very often you have tears such as this, which over a period of six to eight months would have healed without surgery, or the other case down here where again it has healed over a period of time. So not all ACL tears do not heal. A lot of these ACL tears are known to heal. It's for you to examine the patient and correlate it with the MRI findings. Similarly, older people with ACL tears may not be requiring surgery. And let's look at some more examples. We know that the ACL injury is not a simple uh, injury. It's basically a tibial subluxation where there is a bone contusion, there are meniscal injuries, and therefore you've got to address every part of this particular complex injury rather than just look at the ACL and go ahead and do an ACL reconstruction. The other most important part in an ACL surgery is to find whether there is an instability or pain and whether this pain is with a medial OA with varus because in these cases you are probably going to treat these patients with a high tibial osteotomy with or without an ACL reconstruction or you would probably think in terms of reducing the tibial slope. And this is more so important in revision surgeries, more so important in elderly patients. The next most important part 
I think in your pre-operative discussion with the patient is to know what the weaknesses are. Your own weaknesses, the weaknesses of your branch. Let us not be proud and say that we are doing a great job with ACLs. You can't do that when you have a 25% failure rate in young and active athletes. You've got to be fair and tell the patient so. You know that in 20 years, almost 30% of these patients are going to have osteoarthrosis. You know that the athletes who want to get back, only 80% of these athletes would probably get back to some sport and only 65% will go back to their pre-injury level. And that too, it is going to take you a long time. It's going to take that patient at least 12 months to do that. And if you look at the elite athletes, their return to play, and this is a world literature, it's not only ours, is only 90% would get back to their pre-injury level and probably almost 55% or 45% would drop off from that level at three years. The next thing that you're going to look at is what are your plans in every step of that surgery? So these are the other headings under which you're going to look at whenever you're planning your ACL surgery. The first most important thing is the examination under, under anesthesia and a diagnostic arthroscopy following that. The reason, what I mean by diagnostic arthroscopy is not just go ahead and remove the graft, but first do a diagnostic arthroscopy. The reason is because your plan could change. If you find an ACL which has gone off from the femur, maybe you may not operate. Or if you have the skills, you might do an ACL repair. If you were to find a situation where there is a good amount of remnant, you would have to think in terms of a beautiful, nice remnant preserving surgery that gets that patient back to his original. Or as a matter of fact, as we see over here, you can do a good ACL repair and keep that patient's own ACL where it belongs. When you take out the graft, the two things could happen. Either the graft is inadequate, so you would have to probably take an additional graft, so that discussion has to go. Or you may add an internal splints, which are now available. The worst thing that could happen is if that particular graft falls on the ground. So you need to know what you're supposed to do if that graft falls on the ground. Are you going to use that graft again by sterilization? That is known. Or are you going to take another graft? Or are you going to take another surgery another time? To prevent this, obviously the best thing is to take a kidney tray, cover it with a uh, film, and then even if it drops, you're not going to lose it. The other problems could come with femoral fixations. You could have problems with femoral fixations, tibial fixations. You've got to be fluid and have the entire armamentarium with you so that you can change that fixation at any point of time. Finally, your, your work is not over unless and until you follow this patient up for a year. You've got to discuss with the patient that there is a big amount of patient count contribution and therefore regular physio. And if you've sent a patient for a prehab that helps significantly, you've got to look at the post-op complications like a DVT or infection. And finally, if I were to summarize, just having bioskills is not the only requirement for a good arthroscopic surgeon. You need to treat the patient as a whole like any other branch. Remember that knee or shoulder is a part of a kinetic chain and that your surgery is only a small step towards management of the patient as a whole. You have to be prepared, especially in arthroscopy, for all eventualities. And you've got to study complications. And each and every step of your surgery should have a plan B. Thank you.